I'm experimenting with some products called Clear Gel and Therm Flow that a lady that goes by the name of Horticulture and Home sent me. And um, the problem with these products is there aren't a lot of recipes out there um, telling you how to can with them. And what they are, um, they're a modified food starch that um, you use in canning. Um, when you're canning you're not supposed to use flour or cornstarch in your recipes because they can separate and um, change on you. If you've um, made gravy with flour or cornstarch and then saved the leftovers, put them in the refrigerator and then heated them up, uh, you'll, you'll know what I mean. I mean they just never come back the same as uh, when you originally cooked them, but the modified starch solves that problem. And um, Paula bought some of this um, at an Amish food store and sent me some because she knew that I would um, uh, experiment with this and figure out something to do with it. And um, one thing that I'm trying to do with it now is I want to make some um, sweet and sour sauce to can um, because I found that I can batter fry um, canned chicken chunks and have them turn out just like uh, the chicken and sweet and sour chicken um, that you get from a restaurant. So today I'm going to try to can some of the sweet and sour sauce. This is my sweet and sour sauce experiment. I made um, a batch of the sweet and sour sauce by J. Bo Bed's recipe, and this is how it turned out, or this is what's left after I put the um, the sauce into jars, and it made two pint-sized jars. And I went ahead and added the pineapple chunks to it since I had to open the can to get the pineapple juice. It, this is very good sauce. It's um, just like in a restaurant. So um, I really want to use this recipe if I can. And since I had needed to process a couple jars of um, Creole sauce today, and since the ingredients are essentially the same, and you know how you have... You know how you have to process um, the vegetable that takes the longest amount of time when you're pressure canning. So since it's basically the same ingredients for the Creole sauce, I don't see any problem in pressure canning it for the same amount of time. So I have uh, two pints of sweet and sour sauce in the pot and three pints of Creole sauce and I'll be processing it at um, 10 pounds pressure for 25 minutes and um, we'll see how it turns out. But this is the consistency with the um, clear gel. And it'll be interesting to see if um, it maintains that same consistency and if the pineapple breaks down too bad in the sauce. Okay, here's the sweet and sour sauce. Old, um, looks like, oh this is going to be great. The sauce looks just like it did when I put it in there and the pineapple is still whole. The peppers still look whole. This will be great. Look at that. A whole piece of pepper. The pineapple chunks still look whole. So I'll um, let this cool down overnight and then tomorrow I'll open them and see what I have. Um, and I'll also show you how I deep fry the um, chicken chunks so that this ends up just like um, sweet and sour chicken that you get from a restaurant. Now, if any of you see a reason why um, I shouldn't can this this way, um, please say something in the comment section because I'm not one to take a bunch of foolish chances with my canning. And I certainly don't want to encourage anyone else to do it either. 
and I don't mind at all. If you think this isn't safe, then please say so. Um, I just have a feeling that this would be a safe way to can the sauce because, um, like I said before, the ingredients are pretty much the same as what is in the Creole sauce, and it um, was canned for 25 minutes in the pressure canner, so I would think that this would be safe to do the same as well. Thanks.